Welcome back. It's time for property management. Remember I said before that we were making a basic introduction into some of the tech uh, concepts that we were going to dig a little bit deeper. So this section is going to focus completely on property management. So once you have your real estate license, remember we said you must be licensed to perform real estate activities on someone else's behalf and be paid a fee for properties you don't own. So yes, that counts towards the buying and selling of properties and helping other owners in those transactions, but also in property management. So if you can manage your own properties when you're when you're a real estate licensee or get paid a fee by another individual to take on the property management responsibilities for their properties on their behalf. One thing to remember also is that in most states, if you are a licensee, remember you are bound by the license laws in that state, even in the handling of your own personal property. I like to give the example this way. We used to live across the street from our doctor. Our actual medical doctor lived across the, the street from us, and one of my sons fell one day in the driveway. Of course, I was expecting another son at the time. Fell in the driveway and busted his hand open. So the, my first thought is I'm going to run across the street and I'm going to grab Dr. Lambert and ask him to come help. And he came over and he said, I'm going to help you because I'm going to help you pick him up and put him in the car. You have to take him to the emergency room. I'm like, well, why can't you just help him? Like, don't you have a bag? Can we just like put some band-aids on it? Can you help me clean it? And he said, no, I'm a doctor. I can't treat him in the roadway. And I feel like that makes sense in real estate also because I'm often asked the question, why can't I, if I've managed my own properties for this many years, why can't I continue to do that? Well, because now you're licensed. Just like my doctor, if he was a good Samaritan and a neighbor, yeah, go grab the peroxide, grab some bandages, help me clean my kid's hand up. But once he's a doctor, he's bound by a higher level of authority has completely different rules that he has to function under to make sure that he is avoiding his own risk, like we talked about in the previous chapter. So as a real estate licensee, once you do have your license, just keep in mind that the rules change. And even though you were previously acting in a certain capacity, once you're a licensee, now all of your actions have to be mandated by the governing authority in your area, and you may have to change the way you do certain things. Like like in my state, if you are an agent that owns rental property, you're no longer allowed to hold your own security deposits. They have to be in a designated brokerage escrow account. So keep your mind open and your eyes open for those different nuances if you are already a property investor to make sure you're aware of how things may change once you actually obtain a real estate license. The majority of this chapter is going to focus on property management and the process in general. Some of the topics are going to be management functions. When you're managing a property, exactly what are you going to be doing? Reporting for fund or reporting of funds received. Sometimes even budgeting on behalf of the owner. Some owners even trust you to make payments and pay bills. Some bro or some owners want all of the funds to go directly to them, only short of whatever you're charging them for management. And maybe you have owners that are distance owners or seasoned investors where the funds from the rental come to the brokerage and the broker even pays a majority of their expenses for them and just sends them the proceeds. So there's different levels of management. Lots Lots of different possibilities for how you can manage different properties, but the reporting of the funds is a common concept. We always have to be very meticulous on the accounting for how we're handling other people's money because it's actually one of the top reasons that licensees and brokers have licenses revoked, mismanagement of property management funds. So you want to make sure that you know what the rules are and what the rules for accounting to your real estate commission, to your licensing authority are. And also remember so that you don't get too scared that once you join as a new licensee, you'll most likely have a broker responsible for oversight of your actions Trust of funds are handled by your broker, so you need to know an overview, but make sure that as long as you're abiding by the laws and the policies of your firm, you don't have to make up all the rules by yourself. You just have to follow them. So we're going to learn some more of those rules. 
You're also responsible for procurement of the tenants themselves. That might be advertising the rentals, getting those tenants to come and do a rental application, sometimes even verification of credit or income, checking history and references on behalf of your um, property owner. And depending on what their requirements are, those are the things that you're expected to do for them. So if there's all these different possibilities, how do I know my level of responsibility and authority on behalf of that owner? Well, the next section talks about the documentation that gives us authority to act on our owner's behalf. Remember that term, agency, acting on someone else's behalf? So our property management agreements are covered in great de detail in this section also because that is the written contract that gives us authority to act on behalf of the owner as their agent. Remember I did promise that all the terminology was going to flow together eventually and there's a really good example of that. So now as a property manager I'm acting on behalf of my principal, the property owner, and the contract that gives me that authority is the management agreement and all of the details of my level of responsibility to my owner owner are going to be clearly defined in that property management agreement. The last section um, that you're going to encounter in this course of material is going to cover the actual management process and then some laws and regulation, other specific landlord tenant rules and rights. And again, make sure that you're paying special attention to your state specific rules when you get into those because this is an overview of the property management process and their may be some state specific content that you'll encounter later. So if you've gotten into real estate for the purposes of investing or to have a specialization in property management, you should definitely enjoy this section.